Hello everyone, this is just a quick video on image optimization when using e-learning authoring tools like Articulate Storyline. Here I am, I'm working on a course, the SME has provided me with a storyboard, and I noticed there's some images that they want me to insert into the course. Now if I were to just take the image directly from the Word document and try and bring it into the course, it might look a little something like this, like a postage stamp, and I might think to myself, okay, no problem, I'll just size that up. And all of a sudden, it looks like we are working with Minecraft textures instead of images. This just isn't going to work. It's way too low quality. So what we're going to have to do is go to the SME or Creative Services or whoever might have control to uh, stock images or whatever image source we need. If it's like a screenshot, someone's going to have to take a nice screenshot. Whatever it is, we're just going to have to go and get that high quality image. The problem with that then is that it could be too big. And what's nice but also deceiving about Storyline is that when we bring the full gigantic image in, it will automatically shrink it down to the size of our stage. So in this case, that's a width of 720. Now, if the height were bigger than the stage, it would limit it by the height. But in this case, it's the width, which is 720. A different tool called Captivate will do something like this. And you'll be like, oh, whoa, what just happened? And then you'll zoom out and then you'll see, oh, okay, this image is gigantic. Storyline doesn't do that, which is a better user experience while you're authoring. But then at the same time, like I mentioned, you might be deceived into thinking that the image is only 720 pixels. It's not. Uh, in this case, it's eight megabytes is the size of that image, which is just way too big for a course. And if you've got a large course where you're bringing in multiple images of that size, then your course is going to just be way too big and take way too long to download for the end users, the learners. Now, the smarty pants among you might be saying, but Joe, I know that Storyline can automatically optimize my images for me if I go up here to the publish settings and under quality, custom optimization, I can tell it to go ahead and compress my images down to whatever percent I want. And that might work for that particular large image. We can say, yeah, just scale that puppy down all the way to like 50%. But this is this gets applied to every image in the course. So there's going to be images that are just fine. There's going to be some that might be already on the low end of the scale. And it's going to optimize those 50% as well. And they're going to come out looking clunky. Whenever possible, we want to control how images are optimized ourselves before we bring them into the e-learning authoring tool like Storyline. And the best way to do that is in a little tool called Adobe Photoshop or a similar image editing program. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, just hold on a minute. We're going to get to uh, a workaround. But for those that do, really all you have to do is just go to image, image size. And then what I like to do is size it to be the size of the slide width or height in the, my tool that I'm using. And that takes it down sub significantly. And then when we export that, you can see even at 100% quality, it's taken it down from 8 megs to 374 kilobytes approximately, which is a huge reduction in size without much loss of quality. Now, you could even take the quality meter down even further here to something like 80%. And you're not going to really notice much of a loss in quality. And then you can reduce your size almost by, uh, by half again. Either way, I'm going to leave it at 100% when I save it out. Now, there is an alternative method, like I mentioned. And it's all done within Storyline here. This can also be done in PowerPoint. So what you do is you take your high-quality, high-res image. You bring it into Storyline or PowerPoint select it and right click the feature in powerpoint and formerly in storyline used to be called save as image they've changed that to now it's called export picture in storyline and they have two options now it used to be it was just save picture but now they have export original image uh, because save picture compresses the image down significantly which is actually what we want here but if for some reason you didn't and you know you were saving images out of courses because you wanted to keep them, um, you could export the original image. But in this case, we want to save picture to get that nice 
compressed image. And just a little side note, um, when you're saving photographs, you generally do not want the PNG format. PNG is more for illustrations and, and things with just a few colors or when you want to preserve transparency in the background. But for photos, we generally want to save to JPEG. And we'll create a much smaller file. And I've already got it here, but I will save over it again as Storyline Export. And the final trick to this is to select the high quality image again, right click, and now we're going to say replace picture. And we're going to replace that high quality photo with the storyline export. So now what we've done is we've basically, as a workaround, optimized our images directly in storyline. And we can see, even when we zoom in a little bit, that it's still high enough quality that uh, things are going to be preserved and it's not a huge file it's going to take forever to download. So in summary, unless we were trying to build some kind of Minecraft mod, this image was just not going to work. So we needed to go back and ask for the high quality image, which was way too big at 8 megabytes. So we optimized that in Photoshop, compressed it down significantly to only 374 kilobytes, and finally, I showed you the workaround in PowerPoint and Storyline where you can export the image from the program and replace the image that you're using to significantly cut down on file size. So always make sure you're optimizing your images, ideally before you bring them into your e-learning authoring tool. But if you need to, now you know the workaround to get it done. Or if you're just in a pinch, you can do it really quickly. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.